Good. Um, then let's get started. So this is about um, essentially kind of a rehash of the, the FOSTEM talk, essentially an update on uh, CI improvements and suggestions. Um, all of that um, was um, funded by um, the Prototype Fund, which is a, a German um, uh, Ministry of uh, Education and Family, I believe, um, budget that funds uh, twice a year funds open source projects for a while. Um, so we're very grateful for that. Um, work was done by Swante and my son Linus and uh, myself. Um, mission was um, for LibreOffice for the continuous integration, um, um, develop some glue code so that we can integrate more data providers easily, um, get new and shiny tools because of that without too much disruption for the um, for the setup that we have, um, and by that, like with those nice and shiny tools, perhaps create some incentives for developers <clears throat> and QA to do the right thing, which is um, do better work, like better code, better patches, changes that, that create less, fewer problems. Um, and there was the, the idea that um, perhaps we can also use that for some automated feature location. So this idea that Someone comes on the IRC in the middle of the night and there's no one around and asks like, oh, there's bug X, Y, and where's the code for something? And then no one is there and grabbing uh, for get attribute in LibreOffice or get width is giving you like thousands of fits, so that's not gonna really fly. So the idea is kind of, um, so if you have some something that is a feature and, and you can run that on the code, and you can see where the code like, what, 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 which part of the code base is touched by that feature, you can you have a much smaller set of lines or files to look into to find the functionality. Um, um, where we started was this, um, there's, there's a ton of, of tools, like both data providers and uh, data sinks, uh, sinks and analyzers and Jenkins plugins that kind of render something nicely. Um, and then you quickly end up with some N uh, to M to N to, to O problems. So you got you got N languages like we got Java and C plus plus and Python and C sharp and what what else have you not? Um, so so all of that will need to be kind of covered by some data pro provider like coverage analysis. Um, then um, you have different CI systems. For us, that's Jenkins, but there's other. Um, projects out there who use GitHub Actions or uh, Travis CI or, or something else. Um, um, and then you have the, the actual tools like the, the data analysis tools um, that um, uh, need to operate on that data and need to kind of plug, be plugged into the CI systems or just sit on a separate website but also need to be triggered. So um, for, for that what we what we thought would be nice um, is um, kind of have it orthogonal, like so we have a data provider that sticks things into some, some database and then you have some CI implementation uh, that kind of triggers that database filling and then you have an analysis tool that is also kind of separate um, and, and pulls from the database instead of something that only works in Jenkins and only works with um, Coverture XML, which is a coverage format that's kind of prominent in Java land. And you always have this problem like, you yeah, need to generate this, this XML and I can only use it in Jenkins. If I want to use it somewhere else, I need to re-implement it. Um, shiny new tools. So there's quite a chunk what we could do. So this is mostly Java. So there's some coverage analysis. Uh, that's another uh, coverage analysis. Um, that's um, the first, that's actually what, what triggered the idea that some API abstraction for Jenkins at least would lug in several tools that feed this rendering and this display. Um, yeah, and that's kind of, so you can, the discovery API plugin that's meanwhile installed. Um, I think, I don't know, was it UCLOF or VM? Come on, if you installed that on the, uh, on our CI, and you get some nice um, drill down lists like where, how much coverage did you get in total with, when you run make check or make slow check, and you get some 
some nice bars there, like um, how much of your code is, is covered, or you can get this nice grid view where you can also kind of drill down like what is, what is touched and what is not touched. Um, and, and that is also something that, um, that we want to use for this um, kind of feature map, like, like where is the code? We'll get to that in a second. Um, so, um, yeah, more tools from that ecosystem. Yeah, just a long laundry list of things. Um, some of them we're already using, so there's CPP check, for example, that, that we have installed as a plugin um, for Jenkins. This Jenkins tends to, like with, with a higher level analysis, tends to kind of skew towards Java for better or worse. I mean, Jenkins is made in Java, so kind of Jenkins developers probably have some tendency to, to uh, target their, uh, their nice shiny tools to Java. Um, so, so for something that is C++ or so for Python, there's always a bit of uh, an extra mile that you need to walk um, to use that. Um, but it's also kind of a nice, like, um, carrot dangling in front of your head, like, oh, those Java developers have some, something nice there, why can't we have uh, something nice as well? Um, yeah, for, for incentive creation, so it's always kind of useful to, to automate. Um, so, so you want, in a review, you don't want to point out, like, like I don't know, like, like we do with Clang format, like you, you don't want to um, do the manual work as a reviewer, usually. And, and it's also useful if, if you're pushing your patch and then you're getting the review very quickly and not like after two days when somebody looked at it and says, I nah, don't like this minus one because something isn't quite right. And so, so whatever the computer can do for you, let the computer do for you, so you want to automate. Um, and whether you want to leave, whether you want this kind of minus one your patch, or whether you just wanted to have a warning, is a matter of debate. I'm I'm kind of more into this nudging thing. Like it should have a warning. It should have a nice metric. It should have something red there, and then kind of create some incentives that that people would kind of just write better patches. Um, yeah, so, so this um, kind of, there's some, some metrics um, things. So for example, if you, this is some uh, code coverage, um, in this case for some Java, uh, for the ODF toolkit. So it's kind of nice, like when your patch goes in, you, the metric, like uh, un, uncovered lines go down and covered lines go up. So that's kind of nice and rewarding. Um, so, yeah, then this, this um, uh, kind of feature map thing. So the idea behind that is um, if, you, if you have a coverage analysis, you know where your code, what your code touches. So if you have a baseline, let's say you open it just an empty document, and then you open the document with a line of text in there, then the difference between the, the two um, is probably indicative of um, of the difference in the content. Let's say there's, there's a document that contains an image or there's a document that doesn't contain an image and there's probably image loading code then touched. Um, or image loading code is probably always touched because you need to load icons, but there's very specific documents or document-specific image loading code that it's touched when there's a document in the image. Same is true for something like a bold or italic or, or any kind of feature or just clicking a button so a dialogue pops open, then you know where the dialogue is. And you can say, yeah, but that's not so hard because you just grab for the string and the dialogue, but it's kind of fuzzy uh, science and it depends um, like on the strings and it's also kind of, um, it's a bit harder to explain rather than um, telling someone who's a newcomer, click the button or search for the, um, for the help blurb, and then there is a nice kind of ready-made database with code locations that you can start looking at. Or put a breakpoint there, and that will lead you to the right place. Um, so yeah, so you you have you have a baseline, and you have a um, um, a specific orthogonal feature like text that is bold. Then you run it, uh, you create the coverage, you um, compute the difference, 
Um, and then you get something that you can see in the script view. Um, this guy here. Um, that only contains the bits um, that are different, and that is a significantly um, smaller amount of code than um, yeah, checking checking all of writer or, or just. I mean, the, we all have our, our heuristics. So, so we, we when we need to find the code, we have our heuristics how to find that. But it's not very easy to teach those, um, and they're not easily written down. So having something that, that automates that will be quite useful. Um, so, yeah, that's again some illustration of how that is meant. Um, a quick update on where we are. So, so most of what I said, I already said um, in February. Um, we did make some progress. So um, we started to, um, we started with setting up on CILibreOffice.org. There was some um, installing the extensions, running the first jobs, uh, figuring out um, and working around all the problems, annoying uh, cloth a little bit by, by breaking uh, an installation or two. Um, thanks for fixing that. Um, so, so what we need is, so, so the, the challenge is that, that um, CI is a very, 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 very important system and, and breaking that is not something that, uh, that I want to be guilty of. Um, on the other hand, since it's kind of, it, it's hard, it's easy, it's very easy to break it. Um, and uh, so both on the builder side, like when you, in this particular case, I was installing uh, a Python version and the result of that was that the Android build was, was breaking because it was picking up the system Python all of a sudden but then there was a developer package missing. So, so the, the, the brittleness of the system is uh, on a level that at least I, I, I was kind of quite hesitant to, to touch much of that. So I was taking one particular builder and equipping it with the prerequisites to run um, C++ coverage analysis. And I was installing a bit of um, Python code there that we developed um, that would um, parse that coverage data, um, kind of compress it a bit, optimize it a little bit, and then send it out uh, to some uh, database server. So, so um, the only thing that we wanted to do then on the CI was the minimal thing, which is the data generation and collection, and everything else would just be somewhere else. So we could have some nice greenfield project, and we could. Um, um, break that as we like, but we wouldn't um, affect so much the, the, the daily operations. Um, so as such, that was kind of minimal, so we had Cobertura, um, that's this um, uh, format thing, this coverage format, um, forensic uh, API, I don't know what that was used for, but I think we, we just added that. Um, there's two demo jobs. Um, one is this um, this Elkov thing. Um, I think that is from Martin, uh, and that's just driving this Jenkins Elkov. So from this LODE um, repo, just driving that that uh, Jenkins Elkov script. And what we did, we 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 did a, a second setup um, that I can show you. Um, so, uh, so that's a bit more here, but it's essentially duplicating the um, the Elkov setup and running that um, with a bit more bells and whistles uh, to generate a baseline and a number of feature tests on top. <clears throat> and there's a the first um, change there with some minimal. Um, set up so that it has um, just a bunch of ODF files generated by uh, ODF toolkit, like synthesized, so you can, it's easy to generate many, many more of that, because once you get, at least for ODF, there's a pretty good idea what a feature is. You can just generate that, those files, and then you just load them one by one. Um, and with uh, the usual tricks, you can run them one by one, so you can just say, um, um, yeah, this was that CPP unit uh, test name and just run one. So, 
first you run the baseline, then you run the, um, the bold and the italic and the image and the table, et cetera, et cetera, uh, and um, convert that and then stick it into the database. And that's the, uh, that's the code that's, that's running down here. And then there was, very usefully, there was already some, um, uh, some credentials provider installed, so I didn't need to touch that. So you can kind of inject the, uh, the, the API write key into that, into that script, so it would like, not, be, not be visible anywhere and then not hard-coded um, anywhere. Um, yeah, so, so that, that is working mostly. Um, and it's feeding the um, it's feeding the database, so that's like per per commit you got like n runs, so it's like three. There's like LibreOffice, and then there's the master branch, and then there's commits as many as you run this for, um, and then per commit you got a number of tests that are that are run. And on the other end, um, there's a test Jenkins um, uh, some demo uh, server from Allotropia right now that also hosts the database where we can then run those analysis steps and um, that's kind of work in progress. Um, um, but we're quite happy that, that actually the, um, the side of, on the LibreOffice side that, that is working now. The code is um, on GitLab and this, you know, this Cover REST project um, and there's some, um, yeah, there's some front end thing and there's a um, um, there's a um, database, like an API, an API generated, and, and the database backend, um, and some conversion scripts for ingesting the, the, the several coverage data formats, um, and this uh, Jenkins plugin for the visualization, this, this, um, this coverage API thing that we also need to extend because that wants to. Um, ingest directly, um, no, that wants, want, want to uh, um, read directly from the database. Um, right, so, did you actually see what I was uh, telling you? No, you didn't. Sorry for that. So I, was, I was looking at this. Uh, That's a, that's a shame. So you were looking at the static slide while I was kind of rambling on. Yeah. Um, sorry. So uh, that is clearly not ideal. Um, so what I was showing you is um, this guy here. It's a little, little lip. So um, yeah, sorry, that has to do. Um, otherwise, we're running out of time. But. Um, that, that is the uh, LO coverage Linux 64, and that is tied to one specific builder uh, somewhere here. Yeah, the, this, this coverage label, and that's served by, I think, Tinderbox 58 or something, or 85. Uh, and, and that has the, that specific setup, like with Python and, and the code there. Um, and in theory, we can could then, if we want to roll that out, we or we need more, more build power there. The usual trick, like with the um, uh, LODE setup, that would then kind of pull that in. Um, the only prerequisite really is some reasonably recent Python 3.3.6, I believe, um, that should be available also on, on CentOS 7. Um, and then and the code itself that that can live under that just is, it's, it's just a Git checkout. Um, from this uh, repo here. So also to show you that, so that's GitLab com cover minus rest uh, with, with all the code there like in one place. Okay, so um, right, back to that. Um, yeah, the, the, the initial idea was to um, actually run that on the um, on the Jenkins host, and that failed quite so spectacularly because um, uh, we, first we ran it with the with the full coverage, like without this diffing thing, like just the difference, but with the full coverage data that's some 400 something megabytes of XML, and just the thing was keeling over. Uh, and I'm quite glad I didn't try that on the 
the projection Jenkins, um, but on some other hosts. So, th so that would have been uh, not so nice. Um, yeah, and I mentioned that, right? And um, the in the end, it, it turns out that that it's that's um, a bit of a blessing in disguise. Um, um, because because of this already pretty loaded and complex and kind of slightly creaky system that sometimes when the reboot takes takes half a day um, not, not to add more complexity to, to that um, and rather put it on the side um, yeah and that's the the idea just as as a visualization like data collection which is minimal and then data processing on this on the Steemo server. Um, this, yeah, that's this, the concept of this, uh, of this, this mapping, like where is the code that does something. Um, the, um, the, the test that we're running there, that's this, um, this very simple thing, that's this kind of the most trivial thing to do, just load the document, um, then well, it has some nice names, so then there's a little set script that parses it out of the um, of that file and then runs it one by one. Um, can certainly be made nicer. Um, the make target for that, um, for building all of that kind of feature tests is make coverage. And that just landed recently, some two or three weeks ago, um, in master. And the change is this guy here if you are curious um that the same thing that but it's a bit easier because it's much less code and um it, it's already java so we get lots of those tools for free would be nice to do for uh, odf toolkit which is a um, tdf project since a while um, but so far it's always only been built maintained released on github um, but, but we do have some Java um, stuff collected over the years, so, so that could be an idea. Then the question is, um, and, and um, kind of, I think we do have, yeah, we have five minutes, um, whether that's maybe an idea, um, because this, this demo thing, this demo server, I think that's not something that, um, um, like, turning this into something that is production ready probably it should be running on on tdf premises and then the question comes up whether it maybe would make sense to have a second jenkins instance for those smaller projects so, so not to get in the way and also to run those c plus plus analysis stuff there um, because it's kind of a um, heavy burden um, and uh, yeah at least at, at least for the next half a year, I, I don't, I'm not feeling comfortable um, putting that on, on the main instance. Right. And uh, and that's the end of. Hmm. That's not the slides that you're seeing. How you do? So, yeah, yeah, that's the end of that um, uh, kind of pitch for that. Mm, as I said, it's kind of work in progress, but it will always be work in progress um, because that's kind of endless opportunities there. Um, my commitment is that I will continue working on that. Um, I will occasionally have a talk filed so that will kick me into action to work a bit more on that. Um, so, so we're making slow progress. As I said, the database is filled now. The analysis um, is not working yet because the, the extraction bit, like um, running the this code coverage plugin and then pulling from the database doesn't work yet. Um, but yeah, that's probably just, just a week or two before that starts. And then at some stage, probably worth announcing that for the project. And in any case, um, your feedback appreciated whether that's a silly idea or whether you got something ready there already that we should use instead or 
anything of that kind. There must be some, there must be some sort of feedback, at least cloth, some, uh, some sort of um, take on this. Should we put it all on one server? Should we have more than one? Should we have 10? Should we have that like separated between C++ and Java? That might be an option. It, it depends a bit on, but it's hard to say. And it's then it, at some stage we need to try that, like on the live instance, whether that's going to blow up or not. So, so for certain, the if we want to show the full coverage, which which means like <coughs> like run all the tests and then see <coughs> where we lack coverage and use this nice visualization, that's going to blow up on the on the at least on the current setup. So that, that, that easily eats like north of 100 gigabyte of, of memory because it's extremely silly. We, we can fix the plugin, of course, but it's kind of <clears throat> parsing the XML into memory um, in Java and then working on that and blowing it up by a factor of, I don't know, 100, whatever. But it, it's, it eats a lot of memory and it also, um, um, it, it tends to saturate. I, I don't know if there's any way for for, for Jenkins to say, um, kind of ionize this this plugin here. Like, don't don't take everything that the machine has just because some plugin wants to do something. And, and unless that is not possible, that because that it just it also takes time. So it just. If, if Jenkins is not responding in, in 15 minutes, I think people will be quite unhappy. Okay. So, so um, yeah, we will see. So, so then, um, but, but it's good to, to hear that, that otherwise you are not, not, not terribly worried. And, and for the ODF toolkit, that's, that's kind of uh, like, that's like two orders of magnitude smaller in terms of, of load and, and pain. Okay, then thanks a lot. And um, if you if you got any kind of feedback, I mean I'm I'm around here like hallway, and you will you will meet me or shoot me an email. Thanks everyone.